So let's go back to our code. Here we are. So now what we need to do, we need to, as we said, uh, split the string on that ampersand because we're going to have first name equals something, ampersand, last name equals something. So I use a C function built into the library called strtok, and that's string token or string token. And string token, we hand it the buffer, which is right here. This has our query string in it, our copy of it. Uh, buffer will be modified as string token works its way through, so we don't want to give it the original buffer. It can mess it up. So here we have buffer, and then we have an ampersand inside double quotes because we need a string pointer, a character pointer, to this ampersand. So we need to put it in double quotes so that this becomes a string pointer, just like when we use printf and things like that. If you put this in single quotes, you will pass an individual character, and it will fail. String toke wants a pointer to our delimiter. This is the delimiter that it, string toke will split the buffer on, uh, the ampersand. So token will come back to us pointing to the first character of buffer uh, pointing to a, a string that uh, starts there and then it will stop at the ampersand because it knows that the first token is all the text from the question mark up to the ampersand. Then once we have that token pointing to that F in first name, it points to what that will look like right there, we use an S scan F. And what I'm going to tell S scan F is start looking in this buffer a token, so I give it token, look for this sequence of characters, first name equals. When you find first name equals, right after the equal sign, there will be a string. So I tell it to grab the string, percent %s, and then it will put that uh, data that it finds after the equals into first name. This has to be the address of the location that this string is to be stored, and we know that first name since it's the name of an array without the array subscript means the address of the zeroth byte of the array, the address of the first element of the, of the array. So that's why first name is used without the brackets. So scanf will get this first value, and in this case it's going to be Tim. And then we will print to the browser, paragraph, first name entered was, percent %s, and then first name. So we'll print was, in our case, Tim, or whatever you enter in there. Then we would make a new call to string token. Now string token understands that it's working its way through this buffer looking for ampersands and assigning information that's in that buffer to token. So this time we don't need to tell it where buffer is or it will start over again and it will clear what it already knows. So we send it null, the special form for, z for total zero, a null pointer, and it realizes that it should continue on in the buffer that it was already working in and look for the next ampersand or the end of the string. In our case, it's going to find last name because that's we only give two uh, variable sets, first name equals and last name equals in our form. If our form had more items in it, more inputs, there would be more values here uh, when as those were filled in on the form. So you can see a very large form like a loan application or something like that sends a lot of data back and forth when you click on that submit button. So here we do a, a new string token. We will pick up this time the last name equals because we know how our form lays it out. Again, we'll do the S scan F and we will work beginning from token, which is now points to the L in our last name equals and then after last name equals, there will be a string there, that's what we're telling scanf, there will be a string there, and we will put that into last name. So that goes into last name. Now we have two character arrays with the value from our form. And of course we could do anything we want to with it now. Well, we can write it to a file, we can uh, make decisions, we can open a database and look up based on first name, last name, and all kinds of other information. But this is basically what we have to do to get the information from the form. So we've printed the first name entered was, the last name entered was. That's the end of our successful part of our if. We do the end page, and we're out of the program. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's, let's watch it work. So here's our form. So there I will type the first name and last name that I want to use and click me. So here's up here in the line, there's our query string right after the question mark. 
First name equals Tim, ampersand, last name equals Hegarty. And our program is going to parse that out with types. And you'll see them show up on your on your browser and say they clicked on our form. It's our first print out, printf. And then the first name entered was Tim. And the last name entered was Hegarty. So it found it in here and printed it out. Let's come back here. If we change this, and we'll put my other favorite Hegarty name, and click me, and it still works. So that's what we wanted it to do. Now I want you to take a look around, start doing some research, and find out what other form types you have and how they will return information. What you should do is take this program and just add maybe a middle name to it, and then add the code into your printfs and your scanfs and all of those to maybe write in here to process a middle name. Maybe you can try a phone number and uh, work that out and duplicate these lines of code to be able to parse the, the phone number or another piece of, of information. All right, that's your assignment to revise and extend HW2 and add some other form fields. Because remember, you'll have to change your form, too, to have a new input type in here. And to keep it simple, you can make some more text input and then run to your new program name after you compile it. Don't, don't forget that part. After you change your source code, you need to, to recompile it. And we didn't compile it this time just because it was already taken care of, but you know how to type CL now to do a compile and link of your C source code. All right, so that's how to process uh, the beginnings of a form using the C language. When we come back, we will take a look at how to look at all of the environment variables in the uh, that the form returns to us and that the CGI common gateway interface returns to us. There's a lot of information there, so I'll show you the program of how to get all that uh, information out of there uh, so that you can use it in uh, your debugging and use it on your own server to learn more about how the CGI works.